All right, let's get started. Uh, this is Gene. Many of you may already know me. Uh, one of the things that I do is work as an ambassador for Commerce Blend. And Commerce Blend is an e commerce community that was developed to give those that are in the e commerce world uh, a competitive advantage in helping to grow your business by being able to interact with thought leaders in the space. When you think of the history, human history, in any era, those that tend to have the best tools have an advantage to thrive. And we now are in an uh, ecosystem of over 8,000 different companies with many, many different tools. And so part of what we're doing at Commerce Blend is helping to vet those partners and introduce you to some of those uh, tools that are gonna help your business to grow in the coming months and years. And for today, uh, one of the areas that we find incredibly important is uh, customized and personalized products, bundled products as well, and creating experiences on your site that are interactive and engaging. Um, so for today, we're very, very proud to present uh, Dan Ostroff, who's uh, been in the space for the last decade, actually has three patents uh, in this area, and there's really no one more knowledgeable when it comes to Personal, product personalization, customization, and bundling. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Dan, uh, who runs Dugma. Uh, Dan, over to you. Thank you, Gene. Um, yeah, excited to be here. Thank you to Commerce Blend for setting this up. I'm about to, uh, uh, Gene, if you can uh, cancel the screen share and then I'll share on my side. So uh, I just lost the button for zoom sorry one moment can you can you still hear me uh yes i can still hear you okay but my zoom uh it's all zoom, console zoom again. sometimes get bar gets buried oh they make it sorry one moment difficulties of technology and if it's meeting it and they're okay i'm coming up and Share. Perfect. Okay. And last bit of getting this in place. Okay. You should see my uh, let's talk about slide. Gene, can you see that? Looks good on my side. Thank you, Dan. Okay. Excellent. Um, so what I thought we should try and cover today is um, talk about the experience that we have, that our clients have, that our competitors have, that the market has in selling custom products, personalized products, bundled products. And why we want to do that is because it's all about the experience. And uh, one of my favorite mentors is uh, Joe Pine, who already in 1999 wrote a book called The Experience Economy. And, um, what, what Joe Pine and his colleagues um, published in the Harvard Business Review and results in a lot of, is the results of a lot of their academic research that shows that um, today it's not enough just to uh, deliver a, a commodity or a good or a service. What really differentiates your offering is the experience. And whether you're um, trying to, uh, whether you're building your own e-commerce uh, um, presence as um, selling on your own e-commerce websites, or whether you're selling on marketplaces, if you're able to sell the experience as opposed to just the product or the commodity, that is where you can build brand loyalty where you can um, sell your products at a premium price. And that is what just so many people are doing out there at the moment. And we're um, from the unique perspective of Dugma as a supplier in this industry, very involved both at the um, level of Fortune 500 cu customers, brand names, all the way down to small businesses 
uh, which could be just one person businesses selling customized and personalized products that they might be carry, um, doing in their garage or using some of the print on demand platforms. We're really getting a, a perspective of this all. And that's kind of um, the book that I'm writing right now is about that. And the, 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 uh, I'm trying to stand on the shoulders of giants like Joe Pine. Um, and uh, so kind of, I wanna give you my reading list and then we can take it uh, from there. So top of my reading list is The Experience Economy by, by Joe Pine. And um, highly recommend following Joe Pine on uh, Twitter and uh, seeing how this has evolved in the last 20 years since uh, their first uh, Harvard Business Review article. Another item on my uh, list is a book called Custom Nation. That was written in about 2012, I believe, by uh, Anthony Flynn. And um, in, in Custom Nation, basically, what Anthony Flynn talks about, he opens up the book with um, when he started selling custom uh, energy bars, where the user could create their own energy bar, say what the ingredients was. He started it as a, um, a business in his mother's kitchen. And within a few months, um, he received a call from PayPal because uh, they were just killing it with uh, the number of orders coming coming in and PayPal, whenever they see a huge surge in, in business from a small vendor, they reach out to see, you know, what are these guys selling? Maybe it's something we, we need to know, know about. And in Custom Nation, basically Anthony Flynn talks about um, till 2012, who were the major players, what they're doing, whether it's Nike ID with the custom shoes, uh, which is the Nike, um, direct-to-consumer offering, or whether it's uh, Levi's Jeans, who are also pioneers in this. They started it, they stopped it, and recently they've, they've gone um, full-time into it. And part of the reason for the big brands doing this is as they move into a direct-to-consumer model um, on the internet, this is how you add value by adding, by creating these interactive experiences um, as part of it. The last item I'd like to uh, share on my um, reading list, and anybody who reaches out to Gene or myself um, after the call, I'll send you a copy of this or let you know how to download it. It's the Deloitte um, Consumer Review. Um, I think it's from about two years ago, but they basically uh, did a really interesting study on uh, users' perceptions of customized products and what are the premiums that users are prepared to um, pay. So uh, just looking at some of the key fi findings here together, price isn't the, isn't the barrier. One in five consumers who expressed um, in an interest in a personalized product or service are willing to pay at least a 20% premium over those. Um, 42% of consumers are interested in customized um, products or services led by brands. So if you're establishing a brand um, or you have an existing brand and you want to expand on that, adding some kind of personalization or customization to your products is really the way to go. Uh, and Uh, so I highly recommend this article. Happy to uh, send it to you um, afterwards. So just setting the stage on, on what we're talking about um, and some of the uh, terms and what I'd like to dive into. And I'm going to try and keep this presentation relatively short. Gene, I invite you and anybody else to ask me questions as, they go th as, as I go through this to kind of direct me to make sure that I am uh, covering what's of interest to everybody. So and, uh, Dan, quick, quickly on that note, for anyone that's in for the first time, there is a, a Q and A uh, icon down at the bottom of your uh, Zoom console. So you can click on that, add questions at any time. Excellent, thanks, Gene. Um, and I really encourage that because sometimes I can go off on a tangent and uh, keep me focused uh, with those questions of what interests the current participants in the call. So 
mass, let's talk about mass customization a moment. And uh, that is a huge concept. To me, it sounds like a, uh, an oxymoron almost. So customization is, is more or less about making one-offs. Mass production, everybody knows the industrial revolution and um, you can buy any Model T Ford as long as it's black. Um, so somewhere along that, um, spectrum or continuum from 100% mass production to one of custom items, um, there, a, there's a huge variety of places you can be on that spectrum. So mass customization and really Nike uh, with the Nike IDs is one of the first players who really mastered the concept of mass customization says, okay, um, how can we let every user um, or every buyer ha get a unique version of the product? And you see it on shoes and you see it on cars. Today, uh, if you walk into a dealership in Germany, you can order your own Mercedes Benz, um, customized, you get to specify not only the outside color, what kind of tires you want, what kind of audio system you want, what color interior you want, which items you want in the interior, what audio system you want, all of those things can be defined. And when I hit buy, all of that information goes straight to the production line. And with a new Mercedes Benz coming off the production line every 30 seconds or something, you as, as the user can actually define your particular version of that car, which very likely um, is going to be different from any other car um, so that comes off that production production line. That is what mass customization um, is all about. So at the, um, if we go all the way down to the manufacturing level, yes, we can customize and personalize items as they can, as they're coming off the factory floor. The way to do that is in the assembly of the products. So imagine that we've, we've got this Lego and each time an order comes in, we pick items um, from the Lego, create that, that custom version of the product, put someone's name on it and it goes out the door. That's, that's one way to, do, to offer customized and personalized products. But we see that that's not the only way and we're see, seeing lots of sellers do it very differently. There are lots of sellers that talk about aftermarket personalization or right at the final stages. So we have customers who take brand items like a North Face jacket, add, add embroidery on demand to their jacket and are able to sell that, that North Face jacket at a much higher price than uh, the original. So, um, if we're not manufacturing the product customized, we're personalizing the product and we can even do that at the aftermarket. So anything in between is also um, okay. The other um, supply chain aspect of this that we're seeing right now growing incredibly is the world of print on demand. So print on demand is, um, some printers in there, something like 26,000 printers in the US, um, some of these printers have understood that there is a market for custom, for, for custom products and they've converted their world into print on demand. Print on demand basically means that um, I can sell one-offs. And uh, I'll mention what Amazon are doing in the field of print on demand in a moment, but uh, the, the concept is some of these printers have said, okay, there are new technologies in print available. Um, these are called direct to garment, which is basically where the printer prints directly on the garment. And that is due to some new inks, new technologies that have been around in the last 10, 20 years that um, are becoming feasible for these printers to buy. And they make it cost effective that each printer, each T-shirt that is printed um, just once is is cost effective, as opposed to how T-shirts were usually custom, um, how you usually print on T-shirts, which is a screen printing process, where it really only becomes price effective 
if you're making at least 20 or 30 of the of the item with print on demand it's cost effective even printing um, in one-offs so that these print on demand companies and you can think of Vista print you can think of um, custom cat print print full printify there are lots of the shirtly there are a lot of these print on demand companies coming out here there and what these guys are doing is they've got a set of blanks kind of like what Zazzle and Cafe Press used to do but the model has changed somewhat where you can now sell on your own website very popular on Shopify sites on big commerce sites on Magento sites where people have already developed apps that enable the order to go straight through to the print on demand company. Most of these print on demand companies are actually doing drop shipping as well. So if you're, if you're, if you've got a niche market and you're selling products that are basketball related, but you don't currently sell t-shirts, the opportunity for you to now add, um, customized T, uh, basketball t-shirts to your product offering without having to worry about extra inventory, extra, extra, extra products. You can add to your website a section of basketball t-shirts, um, not even customized, you know, just basketball t-shirts that are cool basketball t-shirts, partly promoting your own brand. Um, you can do that. And every time an order comes in, the order goes straight to the print on demand fulfillment company. You send them the order, you send them the drop shipment, you send them your branding. They will, they will do it with your branding. They will ship it to the end customer and you're just collecting the difference between what you're paying the print on demand company and what you're charging um, your customer. So, uh, you know, both Gene and I are happy to, um, to have follow up calls next week where we can dive deeper into any of these subjects and I can recommend some of the print on demand companies. We can brainstorm some of those ideas of uh, what can be done. Let's talk briefly about marketplaces. So um, till now we were talking about how you can implement this on your own e-commerce sites. If you have presence on the marketplaces, if you want additional presence on your on the marketplaces, you can do this. And I'm particularly interested in the marketplaces that sell products that can be customized and personalized. Um, Amazon have come out with uh, Amazon Custom, which is their uh, version competitor to Etsy. And Etsy is the well-known custom products uh, marketplace. These marketplaces are still in the early stages. Um, it's mostly about selling custom products as opposed to customized products. So a custom product being a, you know, I create a one-off product. I take a picture of it. I put it on Etsy. Someone who likes it buys that product as opposed to customized products where I come to Etsy, I message the seller and say, um, I like that product, but can you put my name on it? And then um, it's made to order and uh, shipped to the customer. So custom is already big on these platforms. They haven't yet cracked the, um, the interactive customization and personalization, uh, but they're getting there and we're also playing in those markets. One more word on the uh, print on demand world, what's happening there in Amazon. Amazon have something called Merch by Amazon, which has been very successful. This is the Amazon Zazzle Cafe Press um, competitor. And basically, um, and let me uh, just throw that onto a slide so that we can talk about it. Um, as I highly recommend, if you're not familiar with it, do, do take a look at uh, Merch by Amazon. And Merch by Amazon basically have tens of thousands of people uh, who are licensed to sell on Merch by Amazon. What these, people, what these Merch by Amazon sellers are doing is they're creating designs of t-shirts, uploading them to Amazon. Amazon then does the entire fulfillment of the product. And for each, uh, including, uh, including shipping the product, uh, printing the product, shimp, shipping it to the end customer, Amazon Prime, um, and the seller just collects a royalty for that. Very good if you have your own brand, if you've got your own licensed uh, copyright art, but most of the people selling there are just creating really, really cool t-shirts for specific niches, for specific events, for gifts. 
and basically they've uh, increased the number of products available on Amazon by tens of millions um, just because these thousands of people are working for Amazon on a daily basis, creating, creating designs, uploading them to Amazon. And, um, you know, there are no inventory costs, costs of that. These sellers are creating their own t-shirt businesses without worrying about um, hand, handling um, inventory. And they're also selling them on the biggest marketplace in the world um, for consumer goods, which is Amazon. So take a look at Merch by Amazon if uh, you're not already. What does Dugma do? Dugma is mostly involved in creating experiences um, for interactive selling of customized, pers personalized, and bundled goods. So um, the links to the sites that uh, we can give you, or that I put in this, uh, put in this, I'll put in a separate slide, is our demo stores, and this is just demoing the concept. So uh, demo.dugma.com is a big commerce uh, demo site where we show how custom products should be and can be sold within the e-commerce platform and what that experience should be. You've probably seen experiences like, like this. Um, we've got more experience than anybody else in implementing these experiences. We know what works, what doesn't. Um, what I believe works really well is adding the customization inside the product listing page itself. So take a look at this custom baseball bat. The user doesn't even know that they really in some kind of unique experience. It just seems totally natural for them as they come. So the user comes here, oh, I, I want to create my own custom baseball bat. Um, I'd like a black handle. And wow, the handle, Change, color changed in real time as I chose it. Well, what does the red look like? What does the blue look like? And to most users, this is a completely natural experience. It's not as though we've, you know, told them you have to customize, you have to personalize, you have to cl click on a button to happen to do this. No, they're just making their choices. And as is 100% natural to them, they're seeing that the image is being updated in real time. So now if I say, okay, I actually want the barrel color also to be red, um, but let's make the handle color uh, black and let's make the handle color red. That looks pretty co cool. Um, and now the engraving, oh, I can actually engrave on this. I can choose uh, my color. Yeah, the silver kind of stands out more. And now I can put in here, um, maybe something that promotes my brand. So commerce uh, blend and maybe if Gene's feeling generous, he can, he can send you a baseball, a commerce, your, your own commerce blend uh, baseball bat to, who, um, to one of the participants today. Um, so as I type in here, the best way to learn about selling more. This seamless experience to the user, they're just selecting options, they're typing, um, and it's appearing in the right place. No matter what they do, it always looks good. So you see how, as I, I made a line that's a bit longer, it auto-sized the text. It's always in the right position. User is not dragging and dropping text. User is not freely designing this. We, don't, we believe that a customization or personalization experience within a uh, e-commerce experience should not be a Photoshop. 99% of the users are not graphic designers. So this experience has to be one where no matter what the user does, it's going to look good. And that is the really real challenge of creating experiences for customized and personalized uh, products. So we consider this a relatively simple product, this, this bet, but there are challenges in here. There are challenges in terms of user experience, um, how you do that um, in a, with speed. So as I click on the thumbnails, the user shouldn't have to wait. They shouldn't see a busy cursor. Um, as, um, you know, how this text is going to look, which fonts we're going to be offering, um, how, as, as I type, it's going to be placed at this road, in this rotated um, look so that we can really give the feeling of that baseball bats. Let's jump into a few more uh, products to talk about how products can be customized and personalized. And again, the 
um, the, the technology out there today to offer engravings, to offer laser engravings, to offer printing, um, these technologies are now available and you can use them. So I'm just going to uh, pull up a few examples as we talk. Um, there's one that I'm looking for. Let's see if I can find it of the more advanced things. Yeah, so logo-based um, product customization and personalization. So uh, for the B2B market, this is really big. We, we launched a B2B site for greeting cards um, a few weeks ago that's doing really, really well for greeting cards in the financial industry where the um, the, the B2B users are buying hundreds of cards every day with a logo on them and a standard greeting um, just through a very, very easy user experience. So here, um, let's do, let's have some fun. Uh, we take this uh, board and if I hit upload your logo, let's do something a little bit more advanced here. Um, I'm going to upload a logo uh, this Diet Coke logo that has three colors to it. You see it's got the gray, the black, and the red. As I upload that, we're converting that to a monotone uh, image and make it look like it's engraved on uh, the product. So the user can now adjust, what, uh, adjust the positioning, make sure that they align it exactly how they want to. And... Um, they can now say, okay, sh maybe it'll look better on a, on a lighter board or a different shaped board. And this is again, natively part of the user experience um, within the e-commerce uh, product page. So once I'm happy with that product, I can add it to cart, that add to cart button is there. Everything is operating as it should be in, within the, uh, uh, the experience. Once that, that is uploaded, uh, we make sure to provide the you, the seller, everything you need in order to sell that product. So the information added to the shopping cart and to the order is the image that the user uploaded. It's the thumb image of what the user saw when they were checking out and the save design link, which is um, a really, really cool way to now promote personalized and customized products. That's, that link is actually a link to the product page and um, it has the unique identifier of that design that I just created in real time. So now if I'm sharing that link, be it on um, order acknowledgements, on promotions that I send out via email, on social media. Sharing custom design products is now as simple as sharing a URL. When that page loads, it loads with the design that the first person created. And the second person can either continue to edit that or they can hit add to cart and buy and check out. So we've talked about um, the experience for customizing products, personalizing products. I've shown some uh, experiences that look simple and that's um, if by making them look simple, um, that we, we're actually, it means that we're winning because user experiences should be simple. Let's look at how complex things can really get. So uh, Dynamic Team Sports, one of the biggest manufacturers in North America of custom team uniforms. They've been able to reduce the time to order dramatically um, by implementing this kind of design technology. Typically this world of team uniforms is a catalog based experience. Uh, you can imagine the sales rep of Dynamic or of one of the bigger companies, uh, one of the bigger brands going into the schools to offer custom products. They send out the catalog in advance, but very often the rep is the one who goes, meets with the athletic director. The athletic director points to something out of the catalog, says, I want that, but I want it in my team colors with my logo. How's it going to look? And they, that process then the rep goes back to the office, gets a graphic designer to create a mock-up, and that order process used to take about three weeks to a month. Now it is instant through uh, interactive design. So now the user comes, the athletics director, the parent, the mom, uh, the, com comes on here and says, well, I like that design of the diamond, but I want to see that in 
my team colors and I want to be able to customize that. I want to be able to design it myself and see exactly how the final uniform is going to look. So in order to do that, they now come to the product page and this product page offers them really the experience of taking that ready-made design that looks great and customizing it to their team colors. So they might say, okay, my team colors are black, uh, purple, and white. And immediately they now see that uniform in purple and white. And I, uh, we're based out of Chicago, so I'm just gonna put in here uh, North Western, and I've got full control of the effect here because for this market, I need to be able to decide exactly on the size of that. Let's add a curve to it. Um, and let's bring that down a little bit. Let's reduce the outline size a little bit. And because I chose these colors earlier, these are the colors available to me. So now if I wanted, for example, the full color to be white and the outline color to be purple, I can do that, maybe make that outline a little bit stronger so that it stands out a little bit more. But actually the defaults it gave me are probably better um, for this. And just the bottom text uh, can be Wildcats. Um, and then I can go ahead and add a uh, front number. So let's add a five inch number there. Again, let's keep the full color and the outline color uh, the same over there. That process, and then if I wanted, you know, I can go to the back of the garment, to the left side, to the right side. Um, when it comes to the shorts, uh, let's go back to the front. Uh, when it comes to the shorts, I can say, okay, I wanna add a logo. So if I add that logo to the top right chest, to the center, um, or none at the top and just put a logo here on the bottom. I can upload a logo. I probably don't have a Wildcats logo, so you'll forgive me if I'll just put a bird there. Upload the, and that um, is there instantly. I can now actually go ahead and create the entire roster and buy that on, online. This particular website is built on BigCommerce, so the entire process can, either, can now be to check out um, the products. So we've spoken about customization, we've spoken about personalization. So, you know, if you've got, if you're selling products, be it furniture, be it um, gifts, be it uh, sports equipment, the opportunity to add customization and personalization really can open up a huge new market for you. And, um, you know, uh, I've just given examples, but pretty much in any type of market, there are opportunities. These things can be uh, simpler projects, more difficult projects. Some of the fanciest things that we've done are um, these name rings. I'll open that one. And then I want to talk about interactive bundling just before... Um, we go into the questions. I see one question already and I'll come to that uh, in a moment. If I was to add here, uh, Gene, you see how that, how realistic that looks. What a fun way to buy a custom name ring where I see exactly how that product is gonna look uh, before I buy it. So I'm gonna answer one question that I see in the uh, chat. And then I still wanna talk about uh, the opportunity for interactive bundling of products. Even if you don't sell products that can be customized and personalized, you can offer interactive bundling. And um, I do wanna to get to that as well. So what happens if you provide users, uh, so Maria has asked the question of, so what happens if I wanna provide users with the option to personalize as you've shown in my uh, demo, but I can't standardize pricing or product options for every pro possible combination of colors, sizes, etc. So. I would ask how you're doing that today. So um, it really depends on what e-commerce platform you're, you're using, but because most of these options are built into the e-commerce page using standard e-commerce uh, functionality, whatever pricing options the e-commerce platform has given you or you can customize, that's what we're talking about. So let me show you an example, an example in Magento, for example. If we go to magento.dugma.com, 
and we look at a custom ring and this is using Magento options out of the box. Let's take this uh, ring designer. And because the options here on the right hand side are native Magento options, each option can be assigned its own price. So if I have a, a rose gold ring, it's an extra $50. If I have a yellow gold, you don't have the extra price. Uh, so if I've got a platinum, and if you're able to build your inventory as this kind of Lego, where each object has its own uh, price, then as you select the options, the pricing can be updated. This particular functionality is easier in Magento for example, than in BigCommerce. In BigCommerce, you need to build rules for that and variants for it, and you are limited to the number of variants. I think in uh, BigCommerce, you need about, you'd have about 600 uh, variants, which can be enough. Uh, if you need something custom beyond that, then uh, it's just about uh, building that inventory as um, individual SKUs to, when, when combined, create a combined SKU and that is an extra, a different price to it. Feel free to expand on the question in the Q&A and I'll come back to it. I did want to cover the concept of setting uh, bundled products. So I'd like to show what we've done for Boy Scouts of America. So I'm sure there's some parents and some former Scouts in today's uh, audience. You've probably had the experience of buying a uniform for a scout. This used to be really, really challenging. On 95% of the websites out there, the experience is they'll send you to a product page for each product you wanna buy. But that's not how users buy. When a user, come, when a user wants to buy a uniform for let's say Tiger Girls, what they really want is the ability to mix and match that uniform and buy the entire uniform in one experience. So that's what we're gonna do here with the Tiger uniforms on the Boy Scouts of America's uh, store. And here the process is, yes, I um, for my uniform, I either need a cap or I don't. Maybe I've got a hand-me-down for the cap, so I don't need the cap, but I certainly need a new, short, uh, a new uh, shirt for my daughter. So let's start with a short sleeve shirt. And actually, um, Maybe, you know, we're coming into winter, maybe what I really need is a long sleeve shirt. So as I choose the long sleeve shirt, it now appears as a long, long sleeve. I can choose my size here, uh, a medium, large, and this is coming, the, again, this is using uh, Magento. So Magento handles bundled products really, really nicely. Um, and so these are inventory items. So if we're currently out of, a uh, small, then it's not gonna show up. And I can choose my quantity. Maybe I wanna buy two of these uh, shirts. For the bottoms, I want to uh, buy a skort, or actually let's go for roller, roller pads. Those are pretty modern and users like that. Um, I can take some socks. And as I go through this buying experience, the, uh, the bundle is the bundle options are showing here on the right hand side, but the visualization is what really makes it uh, compelling and something that's uh, going to look good. It looks like they're out of stock for some of the negative items, so I'm going to skip ahead. My pack number, let's say my pack number is 251. That now shows up as embroidered um, on, the, on, the, on the left hand sleeve. I can add a den emblem, which is added on the other sleeve. I can add a world crest, which is added here on the shirt. And this is a really fun visual way um, to shop. Prior, prior to adding to cart, I can uh, review my items, go back, edit them, etc. cetera. Um, so what I'm buying right now is a Tiger Uniforms Girl uniform, uh, a media, two medium-sized long sleeve shirts, one bottom, uh, one pair of socks and the various insignia. And when I hit add to cart, all of those products are gonna be added um, at once. How does this, you know, this is about how users really wanna buy products. When I go to buy, uh, when I walk into a furniture store, I'm typically designing a room. 
So if on your furniture so store, you're sending me to a product page to buy a sofa and a product page to, to buy a rug. That is not the experience. That is not how I buy. So um, what the same bundling can be done. I can show an entire catalog in uh, an interactive design experience. So take a look at this room, uh, for example. Take a look at this experience of how furniture should be sold um, online. So the user can come here and say, okay, you know, my room, I actually have a lighter color floor and my walls are a little bit darker. I actually, I'm thinking of painting my walls red or a, a lighter green. Now maybe I'll go for something, uh, you know, a little bit less invasive. Let's st stick with the white wall for now. But now let's look at my entire catalog. So my catalog consists of rugs, sofas, coffee tables, lighting, right, you know, chairs, etc. And look how this is built. I can now click on any item and say, um, for a sofa, I don't like the Edward. What does this sofa look like? No, ah, that's actually a, looks like a really comfy sofa. Um, but for my design, I actually wanted it in a different color. I'm going to take it in the saffron or maybe this uh, gold color. Now let's go back to uh, that saffron. And as I click on each product, now I look at the available uh, rugs. So, um, you know, I could go for a uh, busy mosaic patchwork, um, or I could go for something much simpler like a white carpet. And each item, as I click on it, I can see the entire digital catalog. Um, so I actually like the uh, this rocker again. Let's go for the simpler colors. Let's put the rocker on the. Uh, let's buy two of those. Let's go ahead and look at my lighting options. And actually, I'm not ready to spend money on lighting right now, so I'm going to take that out. Um, the decorative pillow, uh, maybe something with an orange there. And now with the same concept that you saw on uh, Boy Scouts of America of adding multiple products to, to the cart, imagine how interactive bundling of your products, mix, mix and match as we call it, um, can add to the, uh, can increase the average cart size of uh, your products. So let's take a look at one more example of, of that, so I've shown you an, uh, an example for furniture. You can, um, we can talk about an example, um, uh, another fashion example, and we can talk about um, a B2B example of that. So I'm gonna go to A1 Textiles. So even if you're not selling custom products or personalized products, which you should be doing, you can still benefit from the experience economy by offering products that, by offering interactive bundling of your products. So A1 Textiles is a B2B company. They typically sell to the, to the hotel industry. So if um, you're the manager of a Best Western hotel, um, hotel and you need to buy, um, buy, decorate the rooms or buy some more linen um, and you really want to get a feeling for how those rooms are going to look, exactly as we saw in the furniture designer earlier, you can say, okay, you know, my room is uh, very much uh, like this. Um, what I can now choose my bed skirt. Let's go for a light blue there. I can choose my top cover. And this is really a creative way to sell um, linen by A1 Textiles uh, to their hotels. And again, you know, uh, very similar to what we saw earlier, but these are their products in the B2B environment. So anything where there's um, some kind of product customer um, uh, of where users gonna typically mix and match products, that's where the opportunity to increase average card size by offering interactive bundling exists. Um, here's, an, here's a fashion example. User can come in here, choose uh, the top that they want, choose the bottom that they want. It's all about mix and match, choose the shoes. What a fun way to buy. And actually, you know, here I'm choosing the accessories. Um, change and as I make changes, I'm really creating a look. And uh, you can imagine that this can be used not only for interactive bundling of the products, but to let people create their own interactive lookbooks, save those to social media, promote your products on social media by look at this cool 
um, outfit that I created, or I would love to buy this for mom, uh, etc. So we've we've shown how in the in, in the experience uh, economy you can um, offer great experiences, be it in B two B, B two C, by uh, interactively bundling products, by customizing products, personalizing products, letting people really feel that hey, they're getting something unique and that they've added their own input to the product. Once someone personalizes or customizes a, a product, uh, research has shown that they're 72% more likely to buy it. They're bonding with the product. They're creating their own version of the product. They're interacting with your products. They're interactive, interacting with your brand. And at the end of the day, we see Dugma as a communication platform. It's we are the solution where you as the seller can say, these are the options that I can offer. These are the product options. These are the products that I offer. And the customer says, out of those options, this is the unique options that I want to buy. This is me. So we're the communication platform basically between the seller who says what is possible, what can be offered, and the buyer who says, this is what I want. Um, Jean? How, how are we doing so far? Um, I think we've, we've kind of run out of time, uh, but it's so engaging. Uh, you've actually sold the experience by the experience that you've sold. And um, so I let it run over a little bit today, Dan. Uh, hugely appreciated going into all this detail. The interactive bundling uh, thought I had during that was that the paradigm for a long time has been uh, in merchandising on a product page. Customers who bought this also bought this, or you might also like. And it seems like there hasn't been much movement on that to really increase AOV. And with this interactive bundling, the potential for AOV just explodes. It's, uh, it's fantastic. And uh, I would say if there's one takeaway from today that selling the experience uh, is really the essence to what's happening next in the world of e-commerce and nobody sells the experience better than Dugma. And so uh, yeah, for those of you who are here today, We'll be sharing the recording. Uh, and Dan, if you don't mind me sharing my screen for a sec. Oh, actually, I did want to mention this. Yeah, re remember the Experience Economy by Joe Pine, Custom uh, Nation by Anthony Flynn. And if you wanted the Deloitte uh, Consumer Review article, reach out to myself or Dan. Um, but otherwise, we will uh, share today's uh, recording. And uh, for those of you who are not already a member, please join Commerce Blend. Uh, these kind of presentations uh, will be happening every week, a chance to educate yourself on what's happening in the community and how to uh, improve the nature of your business uh, by using the best tools that are available. So Dan, thank you again so much for a great presentation. Thank you everyone for who joined today. Uh, don't hesitate to follow up uh, with me or with Dan with any questions, dugma.com or demo.dugma.com, commerceblend.com to sign up today. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Gene. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Dan.